1901. What is up, guys? Chris Schroeder here, back with Matt Shirley for another episode of the Smart Flip podcast, the podcast made specifically for phone flippers and electronics resellers. Um, and today, guys, we're doing a little bit of Q&A. We don't have a guest this week, um, which is fine. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to uh, mostly be doing Q&A. And we want to do that because we want to answer you guys' questions. Um, we do have a pretty awesome Facebook group and everything for that as well. Um, but we want to um, we want to answer some of those questions that we're burning in the Facebook group. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop the questions in the comment section below, uh, wherever you're at, whether you're in the Facebook group, whether you're on you know, YouTube. And if you answer questions and we don't get to them, um, you know, we might get to them on another Q&A Smart Flip session. Um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and introduce myself if this is the first time that you are listening to the Smart Flip. Uh, my name is Chris Schroeder. I've been a phone flipper reseller for eight years. Uh, I was a client success director under another incredibly successful person who, uh, uh, his name is David Kosciusko. Um, I was his client success director, onboarded a bunch of students. He uh, left the industry. I kind of took over and um, I've been helping students ever since. We help people start, grow, and scale phone flipping businesses. And I can now confidently say that we can help people scale to $10,000 plus in profit per month. It's been a long time waiting to say that, actually. So um, now, you know, I do want to throw out a disclaimer there. I'm not throwing any guarantees at you for that. Um, you have to do the work. Um, and with me today, I have uh, Matt Shirley. Matt Shirley is our game console coach. Um, he is a massive addition to our team. Um, he's been with me, what, going on almost two years now, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Matt's also a full-time flipper reseller. Uh, he left his job, what, like six, eight months ago, something like that. Um, uh, a little over a year ago, but yeah. Oh, a little over a year ago. Man, it's already been that long. Okay. So um, anyway, we're, we're both full-time resellers, full, both full-time coaches and mentors towards uh, people that are looking to, um, you know, to do this business for themselves as well. So with that being said, guys, uh, let's get started. Uh, Matt, if you want to introduce yourself or say anything, or if that introduction alone is good enough. I don't know. <laughs> no, thanks, Chris. Uh, what's up, guys? I'm just going to say hi. Yep. Uh, me and Chris have been doing this together for about uh, about two years now, and it's a ton of fun. And uh, we both uh, really kind of intersect at the space of uh, entrepreneurship, reselling electronics, himself, maybe uh, myself more specifically, probably gaming consoles. And then, um, you know, we're also, we're also dads, right? You know, we're out here doing this dad thing. So for those of you that are you know, single and flipping, that's great. Uh, you know, flip hard, save hard while you can. And if you're a mom or a dad and listening to this, hey, we got we got mad love for you because we know that that is a unique challenge in and of itself, especially if you also happen to be working uh, a nine to five-ish or, you know, 40-hour work situation. We both came from that. So we're not walking into this uh, unaware at all of what that looks like or could mean in terms of the extra investment and hustle that is required of you. And so I salute you in advance before we get into these details here on this podcast today. Love it. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and just start the Q&A session on, um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six questions that I found in the Facebook group and among YouTube that I think um, will be helpful for people um, of everywhere in the industry, no matter how long you've been in it and stuff like that. Um, so first question, is it slow right now? in terms of business. So um, I'll start off with this one. Normally the summer months are a little bit slower than say November through February. <clears throat> I mean, that's just how it is, right? Like as, now in terms of, you have to also kind of understand and make sure you're doing everything correctly, right? Um, these summer months can be a massive opportunity as well. So I've been in this for eight years. I've been coaching for four. And uh, something I see a lot of, is a lot of people will pick this business up uh, back between like November through February. And like, that's the only times they'll do it during the year. But that leaves a lot of like un unmade money, you know, during the other months of the year because it's quote unquote slow. And most of the time that's simply because they don't know how to price things correctly. 
they don't know how to negotiate correctly. They don't know how to do this consistently on a daily basis. They don't put in the, the you know, the 20 reach outs a day. They don't answer their leads. They don't follow up with their leads. They don't do the things that are necessary to do this on a daily basis, right? So is it slow? Yeah, probably for you, you know? Um, the, the person who posted this in the Facebook, I think we had eight or nine comments. It was like, they were like, is it slow or is it just me? And there was like nine comments. There was like, it was just you. <laughs> so Amazing. That's amazing. The, the consensus there is like, no, it's not slow. It's just you. <laughs> uh, I, Matt, I don't, I got to be honest, Chris, I don't like this question because it, it implies that circumstantially there are things that are beyond my control that somehow are, uh, will dictate the full consequence of my success. Right. Um, uh, like it's like going outside where you're like, I'm committed to run for the next 30 days, but is it cold outside? Uh, like, yeah. cause if it's, yeah. if it's cold, that gives me an option to not have to like, I'm like, okay. Um, I think slow is, is a, is a most relative and subjective, like, Sorry, really, yeah, really subjective way of looking at this. Um, I th I think if you're starting with that question, you're kind of already starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, you're letting outside circumstances dictate whether or not you're making money, right? Like when when yeah. there's already a path that's already beaten down and proven to do the thing, right? So, I mean, and and there's there's many things that could be like makes it slow for you, you know, number one it could just be you don't have enough information right like yeah, that's, that's true, most, most of the time what it is you like a lot of the times we don't want to admit that we're wrong i'm okay admitting that i'm wrong there's still days today where i'm i'm wrong about pricing on things mm -hmm. like that happens and i realize that i adjust according to the market and i sell the thing that's just how it works like yeah. the other day I, I you know i appraised a little too high for some Oculus Quest 3 controllers. I thought that they were going to sell a little bit higher than they were because I saw one out of, you know, yeah. multiple. Yeah. And that was the first mistake I made. Um, but, you know, hey, I adjusted and they sold the next day. So there it is. Doesn't matter, right? Um, so is it slow right now? That's subjective, man. If you're not doing everything you need to be doing, then uh, honestly, that's a you problem. Um. So the next question, how much did we start off with to start flipping electronics? Matt, if you want to start with that one, I'll come in after. Um, well, uh, I'll give you guys uh, a quick like 20, 30 second backstory. Uh, before I even started flipping electronics, I wanted to buy a course and have enough capital to start flipping electronics. So when it was first available, I started charging scooters in my city to save up capital to start flipping electronics. Um, I actually then, after I bought the course, which was 500 bucks, the first course I ever bought that taught me how to flip electronics. Um, I said, well, what if I could save that money that I, that I make doing this other side hustle and instead actually uh, flip something I already had in my possession. So I started with stuff that was in my house that I knew I could sell on eBay that didn't even require me to use capital uh, to flip. So I had a Kelty carrier that I carried my kid around when she was really little. It's a backpack for hiking with your kids. And I had gotten it, I think when I was in Colorado off of a Facebook marketplace for like 50 bucks. And I decided to sell it on eBay and it sold within a week for a hundred bucks. And that was the initial money that I started flipping with back in 2019. So if you want my direct answer to your question, how much you start with? Well, I guess indirectly, a hundred dollars after I sold something in my house. Nice. I started with two hundred dollars. Um, I was a server at the time, so I didn't have a whole lot of capital um, to make things happen. Uh, but uh, I spent two hundred dollars on my first two phones. I um, uh, bought two iCloud locked phones because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't know what, what iPhones were, and I never used them before. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, I was I was out two hundred dollars on that one. I ended up selling them on eBay, which I wasn't supposed to do, but I did anyway. Um, <laughs> at the time, I had no idea. Um, Oops. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I made I got about a hundred dollars back from that, so I lost a hundred dollars uh, getting rid of them. And uh, so uh, I went back to work, and I just got more money. 
and I tried again and I decided like, you know what, I'm just going to flip what I know. Um, and I knew Samsung's. So that's what I decided to, uh, to flip. And that's, nice. that's where I started. I basically started with $200 minus a hundred dollars. And then, so I basically started with a hundred dollars, I guess. Um, yeah. If, if we'd go net. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's where, that's where that is. So, um, yeah, that's a good question because I think, I think a lot of people like to think that like, let's talk like, this is a great question because I think what it borders up against is limiting beliefs. Like oh, yeah. how much do I need to get started in this business? And the question is, it's a question of perception. If money is an exchange of perceived value and you don't have money, then you could literally look in your house and be like, all right, based on the stuff that I have that I don't need, is there any of this that I could sell on eBay to get myself started, to get money, to go get electronics, to then start my flipping business? Like it's all a question of vantage point and how you see this. Um, and so... Yeah. Uh, well, and I would even I would even go one step further to like throw in another question on top of this, which would be to Chris, based on your expertise and experience, what do you think is the suggested amount that would be a, a, a reasonable starting amount for someone who wants to resell electronics specifically? Sure. I mean, I think it really comes down to um, like how much you have. Right. But ideally, yeah. like if you get I mean. I don't think uh, what a lot a lot of people don't realize about this business is you can basically recycle the money, right? Um, yep. That is essentially what flipping is, right? Yeah. You're just recycling money you start with, yep. um, and I don't think people people like realize that well enough. Um, but ideally, if you really want to like kickstart the thing as much as possible, like yep. if you want to grow quickly, you want as much as possible. If you want to grow consistently, you just start, you know, yep. just yeah. so for example, you, let's say you start with a hundred bucks, you flip, you buy, let's say you buy, um, this is a really good example. You buy an iPhone 11 carrier locked hundred bucks. I buy those all the time for a hundred bucks. Um, I know many of you out there are probably like, no way that's not possible. Well, it's possible. Like happens all the freaking time. So it's possible. I don't, don't want to, <laughs> um, or you could take Matt Shirley's approach and buy an Oculus Quest for 80 bucks. That happens all the time too. So, <laughs> it do I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. So I'm not going to sit like, I know there's going to be some people in the comments that are like, there's no way. No, you just need to learn how to negotiate. Um, <laughs> this is Chris being real. Um, yes. so, uh, Give it to them straight. Yeah. So, I mean, you can start with a hundred dollars. You can start with $50, you know, you can start with some stuff you have around the house. That's you work with, the first rule of entrepreneurship, right? And this is straight hormozy. Like the first rule of entrepreneurship, you work with what you got. Yep. That's it. Like if you yeah. have more resources than most people, great. Cool. Doesn't make you better or in a better situation because you still have the ignorance of not knowing how to do the thing that you're trying to do. You still got to like learn. Everybody starts in the same place when it comes to be being ignorant to the business. Right? True. Everybody. Yeah. Like everybody's on the same playing field. Some might just have more resources than others. Does that yeah. put them at an advantage? No. So some guy can have four thousand dollars. <throat> some guy can have a hundred dollars. Guess what? They're, st they're still starting with most of the time the same exact amount of knowledge. Yep. So that guy with the four thousand dollars can go buy a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but if he doesn't know how to price things correctly, mm -hmm. he's not going to make any money. Like if he just goes so. This is funny. Like, you know, I had a guy a while back who was trying to buy phones from me. He was just shooting prices out, like, out of nowhere. He was a local guy. Um, and I had, like, three phones, and he was offering me, like, $1,400. And I was like, bro, these phones are not worth $1,400. Like, that's not <laughs> how, like. So I realized very quickly, this dude was just, like, shotgunning offers from the hip with no, like, he had no recollection of what he was going to sell them for. He just assumed wow. what he was going to sell them for. So yeah. that, that really showed me really quickly. Like most people don't know what they're, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And so you can have a guy that starts with a really good amount of money and they yeah. can lose that money insanely fast because yeah. they don't have the knowledge. Right. Yeah. You got the guy with a hundred dollars. He can also do the same thing. 
But if they if they pay down the ignorance debt and they start learning how to do the business, yeah. then they will make they will both make money, right? Yeah, that's how it is. They can both recycle their money. So, yeah, you don't. I don't think it really matters how much you have. You just start with what you have and, and yeah. grow. Yeah, and I think and that's, it, that's the way I would I would phrase it. Yeah, I mean, if hey, look, guys, whatever you got, work it. It works if you work it. And so you got to play the hand that you're dealt. And uh, that could be from a position of slight privilege or total privilege or underprivileged, right? Uh, we're all walking into this. Like I, I come from a very blue collar family. Okay. My dad didn't finish college, sold insurance for 20 years. That was his career. Okay. Uh, my mom worked uh, and she worked hard, but again, I uh, had like an associate's degree. I think, uh, but never actually received a degree because she took all of those classes intermittently. So never actually got a degree, but she took like two years worth of school. And so, you know, I could, I could frame that as my identity if I want to, well, look at me, look at my background, look at my circumstances or look what I don't have. Right. I mean, you can say, Hey guys, I'm Chris Schroeder. And, uh, my dad was a, uh, shrimp fisherman. And, yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, I don't know how to do this. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, well, as long as you don't make that identity and hang your hat on that indefinitely, I don't think, you know, things like that should limit your capacity to resell effectively or ineffectively. Just show up and do the work and watch success become something that you didn't think it could be. 100%. I like that. <clears throat> Next question. Um, where can we get leads for this business? So I, just, I see this question quite often. Um, <laughs> this is a very common question. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, hold up. Before you answer that question, could you could you say to maybe the listener or people that are going to hear this, like, why are leads important? Essentially, like, why why would even a person ask a question about like getting leads? Why are leads important, or you think so essential? So I'm, I'm actually going to go a little bit further back than that, right? Okay. Like, <clears throat> so I'm going to rephrase the question first before we answer that question. Okay. What is a lead? Like, what is that? Yeah. Right. So, um, you guys know I'm a huge Hormozy fan. And he talks about this in his book, Hundred Million Dollar Leads, and yes, he breaks does. it down. He breaks it down, and he says, "What is a lead? Like, what is that?" And he comes to the conclusion: a lead is somebody that you can contact. That's what a lead is. It's that simple. So. How can we get leads for this business? So to reframe, reframe the question, where can, where can we get contacts or people to connect with for this business? So if you reframe it that way, it actually kind of explains the entire solution pretty fast. <laughs> um, That's true. Yeah, it's true. A lead is somebody that you can contact. So <clears throat> a couple of ways. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, number one, offer up. Yeah. Five mile, believe it or not. Um, uh, freaking neighbor on the street, you know? Yep. Like, it, So here are the five places that I recommend uh, generating people that you can connect with uh, about your business. So number one is obviously Facebook Marketplace and Opera. These are outreach type deals. This is what Matt teaches with, specifically with game consoles. Um, yep. We also teach it with phones and things like that. Um, that's the first way. And this is where most people start. And that's cool. That's great. Right. So um, and if you do a lot of that and you connect with a lot of people, it's really difficult to not make money. Right. Um, yeah. If you know what you're doing. Like, I got to say that you've got to know what you're doing. You got to know what to buy something for, what to sell something for. Ideally, you want to know what it sells for before you buy it. Yeah. So that's the first place that I recommend. We recently had a student who took that way of lead generation or contact you know, conversation starting. Um, and he did 120 connections a day for his first month in our program. His first month. So he did 6X the amount that was recommended. We recommend 20 outreach a day on phones, on game consoles, on whatever. And the crazy thing is, is like, you will by default, as long as you know what you're doing, make money because there is something that hits those marketplaces every single day that is profitable. If you know what you're looking for, that's, yeah. that's the deal there. You have to know what you're looking for. 
So <clears throat> if you don't know anything about an Oculus Quest, obviously it won't look like a good connection for you, right? Like it just, it just won't. Um, and we see this all the time with Matt's onboarding as well. Like he just like blows people's minds about like, you know, cause everybody's like blind to what's in the marketplace until Matt like opens their eyeballs and then they start see it. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like whenever somebody points out or let's say you get a, a car that's red, right? So you, you buy a car that is red and then all of a sudden you start seeing cars that are red all over the highways, right? Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. Like, you have this thing or you learn this thing and now you start seeing it everywhere. And that's why uh, shiny object syndrome exists as well is because like once you, once you live in an opportunity or once you've taken advantage of an opportunity, you start seeing opportunities everywhere, um, yeah. which I have, which also becomes a gigantic crutch, but I digress. <laughs> um, so that's the first way that I recommend is like outreach on Facebook marketplace. And the cool thing is, is for the most part that you, you can, uh, I think you can max out on like 30 to 40 a day. I don't think offer up has a maximum. So um, there's that way. Uh, and then you can do social ads. So social ads mean like Facebook ads, Google, uh, not, not Google, but Facebook and Instagram ads. These are basically interruption marketing. This is where you're interrupting somebody's news, news feed and um, basically grabbing attention and saying, hey, we buy this thing. That's another way. So those people would be contacting you, right? So they are another way that you can generate leads. The next yeah. way that I recommend is, and I got videos on the, on my YouTube channel about all of this, guys. Um, the next way is Google Ads. Google Ads is what I call behavior-based marketing. <clears throat> That's basically where you take advantage of the Google search engine and put your ad in place where somebody is searching. So let's say somebody needs to pay their electric bill, and they're like, I need money. I'm going to sell my phone. So they type in sell my phone near me into the Google search bar, and then you pay to get a, a placement on their platform for that search term. Okay. So you show up as number one, it says sponsored, they click on it, they send you a message, and they're like, I need money. That's a, that's another way to get leads. <clears throat> then you have Google My Business, which is more of a, um, a reputation-based platform, So, but it is by far the best lead generation platform that there is. Uh, for mm -hmm. game consoles, for phones, for whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can build that up, that's solid. It's separate from Google Ads, uh, but mm -hmm. it's really, really solid. And then the third way, the third way that I recommend, there's really only four ways to generate leads, right? Like you either get outbound, you either you get inbound, you get reputation-based leads, right? And then, um, and then repeats and referrals. So repeats and referrals would be the last one. Uh, repeats, obviously... This is somebody who has sold to us before and they enjoyed their experience so much that they decided that they wanted to sell to us again, right? Mm -hmm. Now a referral is somebody, probably a repeat, who liked our service so much that they decided, hey, this guy is cool. I think other people would want to know about him. And those are obviously incredible leads as well. Yeah. So back up, a lead is somebody that we can contact straight from Hormozy. Right. It's a great way to explain. So how many people can you contact per day? A lot. <laughs> um, Matt, did you want to add anything to that? I know. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, one of the things I think new people really l like overthink coming into this is they're not just thinking about leads. Like they're thinking about like automated leads. Like essentially most of us are programmed to live our existence out based on like an automated paycheck. Like I'm going to get paid on such and such. And so a lot of people approach this business thinking about how do I recreate this business in such a way that gives me a more guaranteed income, mm -hmm. which is kind of skipping several steps ahead to be like, how do I, how do I get the guarantee that a regular paycheck brings me? How do I get leads that essentially like guarantee I'm going to make money? And so the, I think the big question behind the question there is like, how do I, how do I generate more automated leads? Like, how can I get guaranteed success? Which is like a, a much more advanced question, like for a person who's just starting off in this business or to be asking like early on, if you're not, first of all, like starting to build out systems for your business, it's the wrong question to ask in the first place. The first learning curve to all of this 
is just getting hands on with each aspect of the business because you can't teach anyone to automate anything that you don't know how to do in the first place. Um, but like automated leads with Chris was talking about repeats, like the thing is, is once you kind of go through the process of doing all the different lead varieties in the, in the, by way of doing that, you're going to have, you're going to cultivate and develop and build out and, and, and like have repeat customers. Right. And then you're going to get to that place where like you start to automate like, Hey, I've got this guy. He's the person who regularly sells me 20 phones a month or whatever it is. Right. Like that comes after you do the work, not before. And certainly after, you know, putting to action, a lot of things that that question is, I guess, trying to like get answers to. <laughs> like that. No, that's a really good, like, and I have this question pretty often, like what's with people who haven't like even started their business. Um, so uh, there, we had a guy the other day who joined uh, Recelerator and he was like, dude, what happens if I start scaling? And I was like, why are you even worried about that? Like, you haven't even done steps one, two, and three yet. <laughs> like, yeah, the next step that's in front of you, like the next step forward, you're trying to like, <clears throat> like what, like exactly. A lot of people create problems for themselves, um, yeah. like before they ever get there. So one of my best mentors told me this because they had this problem when they were scaling their business, <clears throat> and it was a it was a different type of business, but. They also had a mentor who told them this exact same thing. So they then told me, which is great. This is why mentorship is great. Um, they were basically telling their mentor, like, what happens whenever we start making, you know, let's say $50,000 a month? And he was like, their mentor was like, what are you talking about? You haven't even made 10. Like, you're, yeah. you're creating problems for yourself and you're trying to create systems for a business that doesn't even exist. Yeah. So why are you even worried about it? Yeah, it doesn't matter sure. because you're not there. Right. If you were there, we would be having a different conversation. <laughs> yeah. But you're not. And yeah. and you're not there because you keep thinking about that. Yeah. Now, whoa. Like, yeah. so I'm over here, like, because I was doing the same thing and they told me this. Um, yeah. They were, he was, he was like, dude, this is the exact same thing we went through you're creating problems and you're trying to create systems for a business that doesn't actually exist yet. Yeah. Will it even exist? I don't know. Right. right. And he's like, you don't want to create systems for a business that doesn't exist yet. He was like, and this was the best advice that I've ever gotten. He was like, grow your business and break everything, break everything along the way. This is number one, you know how to fix it. And then number two, <clears throat> so that you can build the right systems. Because yeah. if you build the wrong systems before you get to the place where you're going to get, you're just going to break everything anyway. So just break everything along the way and then yeah. take a few months, get stable again, fix yeah. all your systems, scale again. Right. And that was some of the best advice that I ever received. Um, that was good advice. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, somebody's thinking like, so how, how do I scale this into getting like, and like, what do I do to, to do $50,000? Well, you haven't crossed the bridge of five yet. So <laughs> yeah. don't think about questions like that because a person who runs their business and makes 20 grand a month versus a person that runs their business and makes two grand a month, they're still like very, very different arenas. Um, and the person who's making 20 grand a month, guys, has already learned to do all the fundamentals well because, it, and Chris will tell you this, like scaling is just doing the fundamentals plus volume. So, um, Right. I, again, like these very speculatory, like questions that are like, I feel like that's more in like, kind of like entrepreneurship, like you, you <laughs> been entrepreneurship. Yeah. And um, like, I don't know, like, don't cheat yourself by teasing yourself with the possibilities of what could be if you're not willing to do the work. I have a little, little note up here on my wall. If you can see it, it's, little, it's just slightly off screen. And all it says is, does your discipline match your desire? Mm. And so um, I just keep that one in front of myself at all times. And I would say the same thing to anybody who's asking themselves these sort of questions that are like involve a lot of speculation and kind of what ifs and like, you know, more dreaming than doing. Um, so yeah, nothing wrong with dreams, but actions speak. Yeah, for sure. I like that. So anyway, we're going to get leads for this business. I just laid it all out for you guys. Um, <clears throat> 
So this is a this is a political question. Um. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is my student loan getting canceled? Um. <laughs> is Biden banning side hustles? So this was a this is a good question in my Facebook group. Um, okay. And it actually made me go to you know Google and figure it out. Um, I, like I need to Google that right now. Yeah, I got to Google that right now. Right, is phone flipping gonna <laughs> die? Right. Um. So uh, this was a good question. Um. And it brought a little bit of awareness. Um. So no, that's the first part. No. Um. A lot. It, it, this question involved the person who posted it. Obviously, didn't do any research. Uh, before they posted it they just saw they just probably saw a headline um and yeah. thought oh no phone flipping's dead we can only get a job no that's not how the american <laughs> society works okay so um <laughs> so that's hilarious I'm side sorry. hustles are not getting banned um the only thing that was happening was i guess the administration is putting a little bit more uh uh pressure on like uber and lyft and places like that that are like sure. 1099 contractors and they're talking about bringing them in as employees. That's all that's happening. Um, yeah. And then I guess similar industries like like that, like grocery delivery industries and things like that too. Yeah, courier services and things. Yeah, yeah, basically courier services. So no, phone flipping is not like that. Doesn't even how would how would they even enforce that? Like that doesn't even make sense. Like that traveled people, pretty far from the rumor mill for people to think they can't be right? inside. This is the I land know. of the free. Pe last time I checked, I mean, still, uh, well, you know. Besides, you might need a side hustle, guys, because I went to the grocery store recently and I was like, oh, I got, <laughs> some, got some bread and grapes and spent 20 bucks. So, um, bro, for real, <laughs> for real, I was like, look, man, I'm doing OK. But like, bro, <laughs> the groceries are like insane. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you know, you can make $80 per flip flipping devices, which is quite nice. Um, is so, nice. you know. Look into that. It's a nice little segue to make your grocery bill less. Um, yeah. So uh, we also had another question here. Um, how do I know if an iPhone is fake? That's a good question. So for this, I um, got a fake iPhone for you guys. <laughs> so uh, first thing. Um, that you want to you want to check out. Um, and I actually bought this off of somebody who tried to sell it to me. I bought it for like fifteen bucks. Um, because I realized it was a fake, and I was like, "Hey, I want this because I want to let my students know what to not buy, so that they don't get scammed." I guess the other guy had gotten scammed, and he was really pissed. So, um, I gave him some money, and he was not happy, but it was what it was. So, <clears throat> this is a this is a fake iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um. First thing that I want you guys to notice, the camera. Camera is definitely fake, like for real fake. Um, this thing is, number one, is like super thin, like crazy thin. Um, the next thing is uh, it's really light. Like it's really, really light. And uh, I don't know if the back actually comes off this one or not. It doesn't look like it, but. <laughs> made the of Legos, guys. Yeah, the butt. <laughs> don't feel like an iPhone. They just don't feel like it. Like they're, they're a little bit more protruded out than uh, what an iPhone is supposed to be. Um, same thing with the, the mute switch. Like the mute switch is a little harder to maneuver. Um, it doesn't have the quality that an iPhone has. You know how Apple is about their quality. Like it is quality made, right? Um, and like I said, it's a little lighter than an iPhone. So um, the next thing is most of the time they won't turn on. I don't know why. Can't even charge it. So um, I wish I could charge it because the first thing you guys would see if I tried to reset it is the Android logo pop up. <laughs> that is so, freaking hilarious. Yeah. Make <laughs> sure that you um, make sure that you reset the phones before you buy them. And if you see the Android logo, uh, yeah. So, you know, whatever. Um, also, this one has a SIM pick or a SIM card tray. I don't have my SIM pick on me at the moment. But um, I'm sure that it looks a little different than what it's supposed to if I were to open it up. But um, another thing is, um, oh, yeah, the tiny screws at the bottom where you can undo the, I don't think you guys can see that, the tiny screws that are there at the bottom, they aren't the correct one. So that's another thing. 
<clears throat> there's a lot there's a lot that you can you, if you get scammed like on something like that you really don't know what you're buying and you should do a little bit more research before you uh, uh, purchase a higher end device like that but um one thing that i would recommend is always reset the phone always reset the phone also you can try to connect to the apple store you can try to connect to an uh, iCloud account and you can easily figure out <clears throat> um, whether it's a fake or not because you won't be able to connect. So, um, and I, I know I'm going to get this question uh, for Samsung's. I have a fake Samsung. I just don't know where it's at. <laughs> I got two, I got two of the two fake phones. So um, yeah. Samsung's, especially the newer ones, I want to let you guys know on this one, I got scammed on one couple months ago because it was so good that even I couldn't tell. Like it was that good. Um couple wow. of things. So it was like it was like it was a very minuscule delay on like the screen stuff, like moving the screen and everything. Like Samsung's usually don't have a massive delay on switching screens and things like that. Um or opening apps and things like that. Um However, it, it felt off whenever I was checking it over and like I looked it up and everything and I was, it sick W report came back and like it was all good. And I was like, something feels off. <laughs> so luckily, um, I did end up getting my money back. Um, and then I bought the phone off the guy. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude. Luckily, we did. I did get a bill of sale, so I was like, "Look, dude, I'm just gonna take this thing to the police station and tell them you sold me a stolen phone or a, a fake phone." And he's like, "No, no, no, don't do that." And I was like, "Okay, cool. Give me my money." <laughs> so, Let's go. Yeah. Um, so with Samsung's, the the thing you want to do is you want to go to the settings, and if there's any grammatical errors, that's the big thing. And a lot of the times, the commas are in the wrong place and things like that. And just look for that and um, that that'll help you out quite a bit uh and then just go with your gut feeling if it feels off just listen you know um, this, this is like a 500 hundred dollar buy too like okay it was a solid like i thought i was gonna make like 500 dollars on it uh right. but it just ended up being too good to be true you know whatever yep um so yeah um that being said i hope that helps you guys um and you guys should also avoid buying most AirPods because I yeah. AirPod fakes are so so hard to spot. But one of the guys in our group did say this. If you're going to buy factory sealed AirPods, the one true way to tell the fakes from the others is that the sealing tape has a um, if it has like, I think, a perforated edge, then they are fake. Like the actual... Apple versions don't have like a perforated edge, I don't think. I don't even know, man. I stopped buying AirPods because they're so hard. I can't even tell. Like you can connect oh. a fake pair. You can connect a fake pair to your iPhone and it'll say AirPods. Like, right. It's yep. wild, like how good they are. Um, so I just stopped buying them all together. Uh, and then I have people trying to sell them to me all the time. Like it's wild, man. And I'm just like, look, no. <laughs> yeah. Because um, you can't tell. Like that's the you, thing. You can't. Can't. Um, so last question that I have here um, is best Androids to flip. That was the question. What are the best Androids to flip? Okay. So I'll just go ahead and answer that one. Um, definitely like the newer Samsungs, uh, like S20 is and up. Uh, the flips, the folds. I love flipping the flips and the folds. Um, those are easy flips. You can get them relatively cheap too, because nobody even nobody really likes them, but everybody's still buying them. It's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, that's really it on that one. That's that's a pretty simple question for that one. Um, so yeah, that's that's all the questions today that I have. That was six questions. All right, um, Matt. Anything to add to any of the questions we had or hmm. anything like that? Um. I will say this. So let's go back to the entry level question. If you guys are, if if for for the sake of the question, how much capital should I start with if I'm starting a side hustle or reselling business with electronics? Um, if you're looking for the lowest entry level type of item to build up some capital, I would strongly encourage you guys to consider consoles. Um, 
I, I can find console deals. I can find 10, 20, $50 console deals all day long. And a lot of those deals are double your money, triple your money, quadruple your money deals that I can make a lot of ROI on very quickly. And so if you need a, a quick way to sort of like jumpstart, and that's what, that's how we do this in the Recelerator program here. Like we, like if you were, let's say you were a student joining this program, like you would, you would have me on the first call and I would literally source your city and find you 15 to 20 deals. Not kidding. Um, and then we would, you know, get you started with consoles because that's going to very easily and quickly help you accelerate your cash flow and get like far more liquid so you can buy more product and start flipping phone phones. Sometimes there are low entry phones and there are high entry phones. But if you're buying like iPhone 14s, 15s, you're probably going to be spending a little bit more for every purchase uh, than you might have, to be honest. But with consoles, you don't quite get that resistance as much. There are higher end consoles you can spend more money on, but you don't have to. Um, and so uh, I would I would just kind of add that to the mixture of conversation for today as an encouragement uh, to resell consoles if you're thinking about getting in the flip game, especially with electronics. And uh, also if you do need help or you feel stuck or you want to add, add consoles to your bottom line because you're already reselling electronics, then give us a ring, man. Hit us up on, on the interwebs and we'll hook you up. I like that. Um, just on the phone side for entry level phones, I definitely recommend like um, like iPhone 11, uh, iPhone XR, you know, things like that. Um, they still sell well. They're relatively easy to get just because they're older at this point. And this is uh, saying this on May 24th, 2024. So if you're watching this in 2025, this could just not be good information for you. <laughs> um, so just, you know, just to clarify that. Uh, so yeah, like phones go down um, an insane amount of value every single month. Um, for the first year, they drop, yeah, for the first year they drop roughly about ten percent in value per month, and Ooh. then after after that year it's about five percent a month, and then um, you know, it's like two percent a month uh, six months after that. So uh, yeah, I, I think I saw iPhone 15s that are like what five hundred now, something like that. Yeah. I mean, some of them, it depends, right? If it's unlocked, it's different. If it's carrier locked, it's obviously different. Um, the gigabytes, the color. Yeah. I mean, I don't care about the color for the most part. But <laughs> um, yeah. With that being said, you shouldn't even be asking about the color when you're making offers, just so you guys are aware. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Um, the pink one, it might sell for maybe 10, 20 bucks extra. Great. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That so yeah, with that being said, guys, um, I think that's about that's all the questions we had for today. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. Let us know in the chat in the comments. Yep. And uh, Matt, do you have anything else to add? Hmm. Um, I can't think of anything right off. No, I, I think these are this was a pretty decent set of questions. Um, and so yeah, I hope that I hope that that's beneficial. And uh, guys, if you if you do like this, then let's do another round of this. Yeah, if you guys like these, make sure to throw your questions in the comments below on either YouTube, um, or you can um, send some questions if you want to to Chris at resellingelectronicsforprofit.com, and um, okay. I will take them from there and answer those as well. Um, with that being said, guys, this is another episode of the Smart Flip. If you guys are looking for some more resources, um, you can check out my ebook. Uh, it's four dollars and ninety-five cents. Eighty-seven pages of just solid information, um, and just it's a so course in itself. Yeah, basically, um, that's where we give all like the very beginner-level stuff. Uh, you know, for a very low price. If you guys want to take it up a level, um, you guys can check out um, uh, the starter kit program, and then um, Recelerator obviously is our highest-end thing right now. Um, which is where we basically come into your business with you and help you grow it within a six month time frame and, um, you know, make you profitable pretty fast. So um, that's the goal. So with that being said, guys, this has been another episode of the Smart Flip. Hope you guys enjoy it and uh, have a great day, guys. All right. See you, guys.